In this video, we will be discussing about the HIV and AIDS. The HIV is human immunodeficiency virus is from a genus lentivirus, which includes two types of strains, HIV-1 and HIV-2. The HIV-1 is found worldwide and HIV-2 is predominant in West Africa. And it must be noted here that HIV-1 is more pathogenic than HIV-2. We see the HIV infects the humans, where we have progressive failure of immune system. That ultimately leads to AIDS. The HIV targets specific immune cells, which has got CD4 molecule on the surface of cells, like CD4 plus T cells, macrophages, T helper cells, dendritic cells and monocytes. Now let's see the HIV infection factors that are used during the process of infection. The HIV molecules include two important molecules, GP120 and GP41, both shown in the diagram. Whereas the host cell molecule includes CD4 molecule and co-receptor in the form of CCR5 or CXCR5, both are chemokine receptors. The GP120 from HIV acts as a chemokine mimic. Now let's get to the replication cycle of HIV within the immune cells. Here in this diagram we have the HIV. It has got RNA in it, some proteins like reverse transcriptase, integrase and most importantly it has got GP120 and GP41 on its surface. On the other hand we have the immune cell with CD4 molecule on it like T helper cells have. And also we can see we have got the core receptor on the surface of T cell which is CCR5. To start the infection process, the HIV comes in and starts attachment with the host cell. The GP120 protein of HIV binds with the CD4 of host cell as shown in the diagram. And in the next step, the GP120 variable loop attaches to a co-receptor that CCR5 as shown in the animation. This binding results in releasing the G41 molecule from its metastable conformation. And it inserts this G41 into the membrane of host cell. And this interaction drives the fusion of HIV with the host cell as shown in the diagram. Before we proceed to the infection process or replication process, we have something to remember here that CCR5 delta 32 mutation. It's a 32 base pair deletion that introduces a premature stop codon into the CCR5 receptor locus, resulting in a non-functional receptor. So the individuals homozygous for CCR5 delta 32 do not express functional CCR5 receptors on their cell surfaces and are resistant to HIV-1 infection. Now getting back to the entry of virus. After marking its entry into the host cell, we get the positive sense single-stranded RNA in the host cell as shown in the diagram along with some viral proteins. First of all, the reverse transcriptase enzyme acts on single-stranded RNA of virus and synthesizes complementary DNA from it. That means this enzyme has ability to synthesize DNA strand from RNA. So we have now DNA-RNA duplex, which means one is DNA strand, other one is RNA strand. Now furthermore, we see this reverse transcriptase enzyme from virus has also ribonuclease H activity. It acts on cDNA that's complementary DNA and degrades the positive RNA strand out of it. And we get the single strand of DNA as shown in the diagram. And then the same reverse transcriptase enzyme acts on the single DNA strand and make double strand DNA out of it, which is now a complete double strand viral DNA. Furthermore, this viral DNA, double stranded DNA, is imported into the host nucleus as shown in the animation where it is integrated into the host DNA by the integrase enzyme of virus as shown in the diagram. Now this viral DNA integrated into the host DNA is termed as provirus. The integrated viral DNA may then lie dormant in the latent stage of HIV infection. But during its active phase, that means during the viral replication process, the integrated DNA provirus is transcribed into RNA. The full length genomic RNAs that's called as gRNAs can be packaged into a new viral particle in a pseudo diploid form and then the virus is released into the cytoplasm. Now let's discuss the stages of HIV infection in detail. The HIV infection can be divided into three phases which can be depicted in this graph. Phase 1 about two months following initial infection, the population of HIV in the blood peaks at about 10 million per ml. 
the number of viral rna molecules per milliliter of blood plasma may reach more than 10 million in the first week or so we also see the population of cd4 positive t cells plunges during the acute phase of hiv infection then recovers as immune response appears, which is depicted by the red line here. Then we also see the zero conversion here. We see the detectable antibodies against HIV appear. Immune response causes rapid decline in HIV population depicted by the blue line here. The first phase is asymptomatic. Then we have the second phase. The number of CD4 T cells declines steadily, depicted by the red line here. The HIV replication continues but at a relatively low level, probably controlled by CD8 plus T cells and occurs mainly in the lymphatic tissue. This phase is symptomatic early indications of immune failure. At least after this stage, the billions of HIVs are generated each day for years, mostly by the infected T cells. Then we proceed to the phase 3, where clinical AIDS emerges. The CD4 plus T cell population drops to 200 cells per microliter of blood, which defines AIDS. Important AIDS indicator conditions appear, such as C. albicans infections or bronchi, trachea or lungs, cytomegalovirus I infections, tuberculosis, pneumocystis pneumonia, toxoplasmosis of brain, and Kaposi's sarcoma. So this is how HIV infection proceeds and the emergence of AIDS gradually. I hope you like the video. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Do consider supporting me work on Patreon or YouTube and make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thanks.